2023 is just a few days away and in this video I'm going to tell you the three best beginner niches for Amazon sellers in 2023. If you're brand new to the channel, my name is Miles, I'm 24, I've done about 2.4 million, almost 2.5 million in sales on Amazon for 2022, going to grow that into 2023. So sit back, relax, enjoy this video and let's talk the three best beginner niches for 2023. Alright, let's talk about the best niches for Amazon in 2023, let's get after it. So a little bit about myself in terms of showing why you should actually listen to me. So I started selling on Amazon back in 2019 in July when I was in college. I was working as an unpaid intern trying to get the bag, right? Started selling on Amazon in 2019. Never really figured it out until early 2021. And then once I figured it out in early 2021, within six months, I was making 15K profit. In a month, ended up doing over a million in sales in 2021. And then this year, I've done over 2.4 million in sales. What you see right there is my sales so far for December of this year. So a little over 460K, over 80K in profit. And then this is me with a big FBA ship we were sending out from the warehouse in November of last year as, as well. So obviously, what types of products you sell and the quality of the products you sell ultimately determined how much success you have in this business. So the first best type of item to sell as a beginner is used books. And so why are used books so great? I have pros and cons for all these. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you the best way to get started in terms of what to do now to actually start getting your first sales this month in uh, December and into January on that. So with used books, there's no ungating necessary. There's no approval process necessary. Um, they're super cheap and there's tons of availability, right? You probably have some books you don't want already that you can go ahead and list on Amazon, right? There's millions and millions of different books that are sold every single week on Amazon. So they're really cheap. Uh, what I was doing when I was getting started with used books back in 2019 was going to thrift stores, library sales. I was buying college textbooks off my peers as a college kid as well and flipping those and just books are super available. You can buy them from a dollar or two in a thrift store, scan them using the Seller Amp app, Seller AMP app, which you can get a free trial of, and see if it's got under a 2 million sales rank, under a 3 million sales rank. Buy it, send it in Amazon, see what happens. Because you have very low risk when you're paying $1 for an item. It's way different than when you're putting 500 into an item or 300 into an item for some of the other models like we're going to talk about. However, there are definitely some cons and it's harder to scale. There's lots of grunt work involved. Books are very heavy. They're more work intensive because you're probably only going to be able to find in many cases only one of the same item from a thrift store. And on uh, such, that's going to naturally make it more difficult and, uh, and all that. But books are a great option, especially if you're lower on capital. They let you make cheap mistakes and all that. So the roadmap to getting going with books would be getting the seller ramp app go into your local thrift store, scanning all the barcodes. You mainly want to be focusing on scanning the barcode so that it shows you how well they're doing on Amazon, right? You mainly want to be focusing on um, books that are like more so textbooks, um, finance books, anything where like they're a little bit more intellectual and that that would drive up the price and the value on them. On that, so like finance, business, textbooks, especially any type of sciences, history, things like that. Really just avoiding like the mass market um, paperbacks and stuff like that. So used books are a great option. I got some other videos on that. You can check those out as, as well. My personal favorite niche is um, actually shoes and clothing right here. I don't know why I had that extra bullet point right there. Um, the big pros that it's a high average sale price. Every item you sell might be, you know, 60 bucks, 80 bucks. When if for books, going to be a completely different story on that. So it's a high average sale price. They're very easy to coupon in that you're not going to be buying shoes from Walmart to Target, right? You're going to be buying them from these smaller retailers um, like Foot Locker, for example, right? Nike, Adidas, Converse, On Cloud Sneakers, Reebok, brands like that, right? Hoka, um, Asics, different stuff like that. So these retailers were typically allow couponing and in almost every case, they're going to have some type of coupon, which is going to give you a competitive advantage and it's going to lower your buy cost on that. As well as there's complexity, which uh, I added in the cons. It's kind of a con if you're not good, but if you watch a bunch of my videos, you will be good. So that then becomes a pro. And that leads to a lack of competition because on every listing, there's multiple colors, multiple sizes different things like that, which is going to confuse newer sellers. But once you get really good at reading Keepa charts, which I have other videos on, 
you're going to learn more and get good at that, and that's going to lead to less competition. The big con with shoes, however, is they have a higher return rate, so naturally you're going to want to hunt a larger ROI, like a 35% ROI plus um, on sneakers, uh, when for other categories you can go lower than that potentially if you want to, to compound your money. But there is a lot of volume in shoes, and it's a good category. It's actually a lot of what I sell personally on that because i had a shoe reselling background prior to amazon so i've always just had an eye for what does well and everything like that um and yeah definitely a little bit more expensive to get into per unit it's a little bit more risk but it's also highly a lot more scalable than books um the third one beauty and grocery so these are very cheap you know the cost per unit might be like 10 bucks and all that and they're very replenishable there's lots of volume i focus on online arbitrage but wholesale is also a great model and beauty and grocery is great for both wholesale and for online arbitrage while sneakers and clothing especially in the big brands there's not going to really be any wholesale potential right there so if you're looking to get into wholesale and online arbitrage which is awesome beauty and grocery is going to be a great category for that i also want to mention you can use this website called frontier co-op that's frontier co-op to ungate beauty and grocery although honestly these days, pretty much any online packing slips, receipts, or invoices from retailers will work for ungating. Same thing goes for shoes and clothing. You can use like Foot Locker, Nike.com, any of the brand websites and all that. But Beauty and Grocery is fantastic. It's an easy ungate with Frontier. Um, the cons are going to be there is going to be some competition across the board. Obviously, some lists are going to have very low competition. And there's a lack of complexity, which creates more competition because it's easier to understand, right? There's not different sizes for the most part, different colors for the most part, like there are in shoes and clothing with all different types of colors and sizes for the same sneaker. And then there's a low average sale price, which if you go the prep center route is going to make it a little bit more difficult um, on there. But beauty and grocery is fantastic. It's what a couple of my buddies sell a lot of on all that and really use books, shoes, clothing, beauty and grocery. Really, all of them are great options. And I recommend trying out all of them if you're uh, if you're getting going and, uh, and all that. But if you're on limited capital, books make sense if you have a lot of capital um, and have like a reselling background i think shoes and clothing make the most sense but if you're brand new to reselling or maybe looking to get into wholesale beauty and groceries is going to make the most sense so you're watching this and you want to start getting sales quick how do you do it here's what i would do so you obviously want to get your amazon seller account open as quick as possible that's going to run you about 40 bucks a month you want to get seller amp and get keepa watch my other videos on my youtube to learn how to use those um those are 20 bucks each they're the only product research tools you're going to use a lot of people think you need a bunch of expensive software you don't make some good money doing this and i only use these and then watch the rest of my youtube videos or there's a lot like watch some of my youtube videos right you want to be mainly taking action and the buy box band is podcast as well and then get going starting find out, finding items like you can do this i promise it's hard to make money doing anything this is a good way to do it especially just you know, reselling items and such. But the big thing is you want to get your first sales as quick as possible, and then you'll build from there. It's important to note that what you do day one is going to be a lot different than what you're doing day 100. Come at this with a long-term mindset that it's going to take a long time to get good, but you might as well cut that learning curve out and start taking action today. Get after it. Watch my other videos. And thank you guys for watching the whole way through. I appreciate it. Let's make 2023 the best year yet. Hope you guys have a great day.